that. You know what? I'd welcome a change of pace. Sure. I'd be glad to. Let's do this. He's my uncle Ron. His first name is Peter, but he never liked his name. Wait. But since he always had salt and pepper hair, even Folks always called him Ponty. Uh, thanks for the history lesson. Is there anything besides happy birthday you'd like to say to Mr. Pepper? Oh my God, damn it! <laughs> yes! Tell him he can get the best birthday deals and party packages in <laughs> pizza. Hello everyone and welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. My name is Dodgy and today we are continuing with Killer Frequency. So sit back, relax, grab your snack, grab your beverage of choice, grab your stuffy, and let's get on with the show. Opted for manual installation. What's that about? What is this about? Huh? What is that about? <laughs> Okay. That's interesting. What's this? This might be useful for something, but what? Can I put that back? Put it back. Okay. Can't open that. Oh, I don't like that. I don't like that sound. Is anybody in here? There's another recorder, I think. Some... I don't even know what that is. Maybe it's nothing. That might be nothing. Okay. Alright. There's another one back here. By a fan. Okay. Ew. That was a moth. It's just a moth, guys. Just a moth. Alright. Nothing back here, right? There's another one. Okay. And then there's this back room. Okay. Okay. All right. Is that something? Do I need to be aware of this? that I put can I put this down this has to be important oh report of investigation by county medical examiner I'm sorry I made you do this Virginia this is the coroner's opinion that the deceased went swimming while intoxicated resulting in his drowning I'm gonna put that there. Hello? There's another one. Alright, so I think we found all the tapes. Um, we're gonna have to play them, so we might as well play them in order from when we found them. Okay, get, get under there. Jeez. Alright, alright. I'm kind of afraid to hear what's on these tapes, to be honest. There's also a note? Did I miss one? Oh, there's a note. Okay, okay. Alright. 
Time of autopsy is 7 a.m. Cause of death is asphyxiation from drowning. Okay, we knew that. rigor mortis indicates that the subject has been deceased for five hours. That puts the time of death... Puts the time of death at what time? There's something in here. What's this? This looks useful. At 4 a.m., a call was received from a jogger, a Miss San Sandra Sharp, reporting that a body had been found washed up in the reservoir. I drove out to investigate and was able to identify the body at the scene as that of George Barrow. I contacted the coroner's office and then the boy's parents. They informed me that they had not seen him since 7 p.m. on the 2nd. Interesting. Okay. Can I put it down? Thank you. Small lacerations to arms, legs, and face typically obtained by running through foliage. Severe blistering to the feet, as though the deceased had been running without stopping. He was running without stopping, which could mean that the whistling man was chasing him and he was trying to get away. He could actually have defensive wounds, but we don't know that. Preliminary toxicology results shows no signs of inebriation. However, a high amount of cortisol was found, hmm. indicating elevated levels of stress mm -hmm. in the immediate moments before death. There was no alcohol in the system, but why did the paperwork say that there was? That's strange. Okay, check that. I think it was over here, right? Yeah. Additionally, there appears to be a post-mortem injury to the arm. It looks like it was trapped in a car door. Strange. This is getting weirder and weirder. Is that a record? Can I have that record? Can I get new records for my music? No? I guess not. Alright. Oop. Alright. Here we go. Uh, it was... Wait, this was open and now it's shut. Who was down here? Who was down here? Somebody was down here. It is the coroner's opinion that the subject likely feared for his life and was chased, resulting in a fall from a height into a body of water where he hit his head, mm. was knocked out, and drowned. Following that, he was moved. Drop his arm. Who is that? Who is that? If you're listening to this, then I'm probably dead. What the? I'm a man who likes to stay informed. I've got subscriptions to newspapers all over the country. A few weeks ago, I noticed headlines cropping up in those papers, one after the other. Each headline about a murder. Each murder, the death of someone I knew almost 20 years ago. And each one drawing closer to Gallows Creek drawing closer to the anniversary anniversary of what innocent, but i don't think we deserve killing all i hope now is that i can save some folk from the worst that i can i don't know do something to make up for what i did back then i guess i didn't kill anyone mind you but that's past mattering. Now, there's more I could say than I should say. But my employer made it clear that my family would pay a high price if 
This what is, the hell? This is deep. Peggy is not going to believe this. This is real deep. Ah, uh, it sounds like some kind of mobster thing going on. I don't know. Like, what could he have done? Oh. Ooh, a new vinyl for my collection. Nice. But seriously, what could he have done? That caused this? Something from his past? This is getting weirder and weirder. Well, that explains all of the newspaper articles and everything else. I, I guess Clive was trying to figure it out. I don't know. I have no idea. But this is so weird. Okay, Peggy. What have you found, Forrest? A lot. It's an autopsy tape. Doesn't say for who, but I think it must be for George. Poor George. He was so young. Too young. Something's bugging me, Peggy. What do you mean? I swear I recognize the voice of the woman talking on the tape. I just can't place it. Seriously? Do you think you've met her before? I don't know. I mean, I just got here recently. I don't know. Found another tape. It talks more about how George died. What did it say? It sounds like he was running for his life. Sprinting through trees and bushes, getting cut up all over. What would drive someone to do that? Being I'm not chased? Sure yet. There's also a tape about a toxicology report. There were no signs of drinking or that he was on anything. Mm -hmm. What? But everyone said he went swimming drunk and drowned. It was in the newspaper and everything. Yeah, it's weird. I found a written autopsy report. What did it say? According to that, it's just like you said at the start. George drowned after getting drunk. Mm -hmm. Said he liked to fight, too. But that contradicts the tape. Right. I and I think I know why. There's a note with the report that says, I'm sorry I made you do this, Virginia. If it was on the autopsy report, then Virginia must be our coroner. The caller from earlier, when we had to call the takeout restaurant. Wasn't her name Virginia? <sighs> yes. If only she had made it. Yes. Then we might have learned more about what's going on. It's yeah. Okay. We did what we could. The takeout idea was a long shot as it was. I found a tape that introduces a new detail to the story. Post-mortem injury. Apparently, his arm got caught in a car door. A car door? Yeah, after he died. How do you suppose they can tell? How can they tell? I'm a radio producer, not a coroner. <laughs> hmm. The written report I found doesn't mention it at all. How did his arm get trapped in a car door after he died? Unless he got it when the police collected his body. I guess someone else must have moved him after he was dead to where he was eventually found. But the report, what is going on here? I found a police report. Mentions a friend from earlier, Sandra Sharp. Mm -hmm. Sandra, the jazz runner? That's right. She found George's body washed up at the reservoir. Right. The reservoir? Yeah. What's strange about that? George got cuts from running through foliage, right? Yeah. There's no forest around there. Also, how did it wash up at the reservoir? What do you mean? Reservoirs don't have tides. But that's what the police report said. Oh. It's not possible, though. I did a school project on reservoirs and got an A. But, yeah, not important right now. Okay. The important thing is that it doesn't make sense. Yeah, it doesn't make sense. What are you suggesting, then? That the body was originally found somewhere other than what the report suggests? That the... Sheriff tried to cover it up, but accidentally let something slip? Something hmm. like that, I think. Well, Sheriff Matthews wrote the report. If he hadn't been eviscerated, we could have asked him. True. Right. But Sandra is still alive. Once we're done down here, we should give her a call. Okay. In another tape, the coroner comes to the same conclusion as I did. George was running from something. Maybe an animal? 
Probably not. Maybe, but then there's this next bit where the coroner thinks he was moved post-death. Mm -hmm. So she agrees with us. Yes. At the end of the tape, someone burst in and demanded Virginia stop recording. I, I think it was Clive. This is starting to make sense now. This, this is a conspiracy to cover up what happened to George. Hmm. I, um, I think I found Clive's last recording. I think Clive might be gone. Gone? I yeah. found a confession. Not for any killings, but for playing a part in covering up George's death. He left this behind in case he died. He hoped someone would find it. You... Do you think the whistling man already got him? Possibly. We've had a lot of callers tonight, but... Maybe not every victim made it to the phone, you know? It's possible. We don't know how many there really are. Christ, Forrest, that's dark. Yeah. I know, but Clive said he had read about other murders in other towns, and that the murders were all folks who knew about the incident. And the killings were getting closer to Gallows Creek. He said he wanted to do something good for once. The board in his office. He wasn't tracking people down to kill them. He was tracking them down to save them. Ugh, why didn't he just come out with all of this? Uh, he mm. said his employer threatened his family if he spoke out about any of it. His employer? The one who orchestrated the cover-up? Oh, Clive. I'm sorry for thinking you'd killed all those people. Do you think you found everything? Uh, I think so. Forrest, what's going on here? A lot. Someone wanted that boy's death to seem like an accident. Right. And they hired Clive to make it look that way. Upstairs when you're ready. We need to figure out our next step. Yeah, seriously. From beyond the grave. Oh, it's the witching Thank hour. God you're back, Forrest. I've been running out of stuff to pad our airtime with. Peggy, you work in radio. Forrest, I'm stressed. I mean, really. I'm stressed. How are we supposed to keep a show going with all this happening? I don't even know. Beats me. But we gotta do it, and we're going to. Oh, you're right. So, what's the plan now? Uh, uh, well, we know Sandra was involved in George's death. Right. Do you want to call her? I do. Yeah. All right, but before we go asking questions, I think we should know what we want to ask. Is that fair? Yeah, yeah, that's fair. We need to ask her about finding the body. She was the one who discovered it, but something just doesn't add up. Right. hundred percent. She knows more than she's saying. I wonder what she's hiding. We'll hopefully find out soon. Anyway, just be careful when you're talking to her. Okay. Don't push too hard. We don't want her to hang up. Right. I'll be careful. All right. Calling her now. Okay. So hopefully we gotta. She's at we the gotta. Jazz studio. We gotta think of the right questions. Aha! Forrest, you're through. Hello. This is Sandra at Jazz Pizzazz Jazz Studio. Who is this? Hello again, Sandra! It's Forrest Nash of 189.16, The Scream. And you're live on air. <laughs> oh, I always thought folks called into a radio show, not the other way around. <laughs> How jazzy. What can I do for you? Uh, well, <laughs> we're trying to understand what's behind the attacks tonight. We had a few questions. Why, Forrest, of course. Heck, after the way you saved my life. I'd say yes to just about anything you asked. Oh. Really? Well, that sounds nice. I mm -hmm. might just call you back tomorrow then, too. <laughs> oh, you've got my number. But what about tonight? Is there anything you want to talk about right now? Remember why we called, Forrest. Of course. Do you know why the Whistling Man might have targeted you? Ha! Or like a doubt. Knife-wielding psycho with superhuman cardio. Huh. He'd have chased after anybody. Right. Well, we think he might be chasing specific people. Right. People who know about the death of a boy named George. Oh, I don't know anything about that. Sorry. Hmm. You found the Sandra, body. We know you found George's body. We have the police report. I... I don't know what you mean. It's okay. It's okay, Sandra. We know. We know. You know about? Uh, 
Yes, of course. This studio is my life. After I found the body in the river, mm -hmm. I couldn't lose my studio. Do you understand? Sure. sure. I understand. When the rent just kept going up, he said he'd stop if I just needed to keep quiet. And everything would be okay. Uh... Who Sandra? Was he? Who was he? He was... He said, if I told everyone I found the kid in the reservoir instead of the river, he... He... Uh... Don't hang up, don't hang I'm up. sorry. No! I can't do this. Damn it! And she's gone. Damn. I don't think that could have gone any better. You truly did great for us. Oh, thanks. Well, folks, I feel like I could have gotten more information. Any thoughts on what's going on tonight, please call in. That's good timing. We've got a call waiting just this second. All right. Let's answer this call. Welcome to 189.16 The Scream with me, your host, Forrest Nash. And Dodgy. Hi, Boris. I know this is really out of the blue with everything happening tonight. Oh, don't tell me it's him but again. But I wondered if you could send a special birthday message to my uncle. You know what? I'd welcome a change of pace. Sure. I'd be glad to. Let's do Thank this. Thank you, Boris. He's my uncle Ronnie. His first name's Peter, but he never liked his name. Wait. But since he always had salt and pepper hair, even as a kid, can you believe it? Folks always called him Ponty. Uh, thanks for the history lesson. Is there anything besides happy birthday you would like to say to Mr. Pepper? Oh my God, damn it! <laughs> yes! Tell him he can get the best birthday deals and money packages in his pizza. Start a job. You son of a bitch! Stop calling us. <laughs> that was Sorry, great. For us. Let's just move on. Okay. We've already got another caller on the line. Oh my god, this Ponty guy is relentless. This is 189.16, The Scream. I'm Forrest Nash. You're on the air, caller. <laughs> caller. Are you okay? Oh, they're <laughs> laughing. <sighs> Just hang out. Ponty. Up. Oh my god! Oh my god. <laughs> Forrest? Ah! Forrest? Are you okay? <sighs> Forrest? I hope the whistling man gets in with his own pizza slicer. Jesus, Forrest? That's mean! Sorry, sorry, that was... That was too much. That was! It's okay. It's been a high-stress night. Don't worry about him anymore, okay? Not for tonight, anyway. I think he's spent for now. We've Wait. got another call. Whenever you're ready. There we Folks, go. <laughs> don't spend your money at Pawnee's Pizza. That's... All I'm gonna say about that. <laughs> Moving along. I'd like to welcome another caller to 189.16, The Scream, with me, Forrest Nash. And Dodgy! Who, may I say, is calling? Well, hello again, Forrest. Don. Oh, it's Don. Oh, I bet I know why you're calling. I'm sorry I didn't play your song. There's a lot going on. But please? I uh, never mind that now. Okay. First, I'm calling because I need your help. Oh, are you in danger? Are you in danger? Oh, I sure am. Do you mean... Yes, he's after me now. Oh you? no. I think so. He must have heard me on the radio helping you. Helping? You didn't exactly help. Maybe I've been helping more than you know. Ooh. I was out following a lead, trying to work out who would be next. After Chuck. And what happened? And I started to feel like I was being followed. Hmm. I came back to my apartment building, but this newfangled security system has me locked out. Oh. I need you to help me get inside. Okay, okay, okay. Don't you have a key to get in? Only for the apartment door. Okay. The front gate requires an entry code. The future is electronic, I guess. Yay. I need that code to get inside. I Which know exactly what in? to do. 
Maybe one of our listeners lives there too. It's the new Woodside apartment I doubt any of your listeners live there. I don't have many neighbors. Sounds like a prime piece of real estate. The mm. sound really carries at night. <laughs> Shit. Not a dog person? I'm guessing you're not a dog person. No, I'm not. It's my neighbor's dog. Boy, I wish he'd muscle that thing in. Oh. And now he's blasting David Scopo out of his window. This night can't get any... Oh no. I don't think he's seen me yet. Voice, please. I need your help. I need the code for that security system, or I'm gonna die. What's the name of the security system? Uh, there's a sticker on the box. It says Starling Security 4000. Yes. There's a okay. keypad, and it looks like it wants a, a six digit number. Okay. Starling Security 4000, huh? That's right. Very newly installed. Right. I need the key code before the whistling man gets me. Yeah, of course. Don't worry, Don. Thank you, Forrest. I knew I could count on you. I'll sit out of sight. Call me back soon. All right. All right, folks. Here's a little tune for you all to enjoy. I got a new I a new record, to bring so. Dawn into her apartment. Yeah, let's play the tiger's eye. Coming up for your listening pleasure, it's Caged Tiger with their single, One Last Goodbye. You were pretty quiet there, Peggy. Forrest, was it just me or was there something? Yeah, it wasn't just you. Something was weird, weird about that. right? Yeah. Well, tell you what, we have a Starling 4000 or whatever here at KFAM. Mm -hmm. Clive bought one for the station. Yes. Maybe we can find something to help. Well, I'm not sure who, but to help someone. <sighs> okay, so she's locked out of the Woodside Apartments, and somewhere, Clive probably has the papers for the Starling 4000. Yes. The paperwork is downstairs, so we gotta go back down into the creepy basement and grab that piece of paper. I wish I would have thought to grab it before so I wouldn't have to go back down, but here we are. Nobody's down here, right? I think it was, it was back here, right? But where? Was it over here? I think it was over here, actually. Was it? Yes. Starling 4000. User manual. Got it. Ah, these codes should come in handy. Yes, we've already seen the codes. Thank you. All right. Shut that. Thank you. Okay. Entry code 715914. I think that's I think that's it. I think that's what we need. 715914. All right. Hopefully hopefully this works. Okay. Welcome back, Forrest. Find anything? The Star yes. 4000 security manual. It's got a bunch of codes. Mm -hmm. Good. And did you find anything else? I saw a list of everyone else who bought the Starling 4000. Know who was on there? Oh my god. Roller, Roller Ricky. Ricky. I... Do you think we should give him a call? Yes. Is that crazy? I don't know what you'd say, but... That might be a good idea. Yeah. Okay, one moment. I got the number here. Patching you through. Definitely gotta save Roller Ricky. He was like the coolest person here. Oh no. Shit. He probably can't hear it over the music. Forrest, I don't know about this. This is super weird. Just put me through to Don. I'll take care of this one way or another. Okay. If you say so. When you're ready, shut the music off. Line one. Whenever you're ready. Don, are you there? This is Forrest Nash from 189.16, The Stream. With Dodgy. Oh, thank God you're back. Yeah. I'm so afraid. What's the code to the gate? 7-1... Entry code. Entry code. The code is 715-914. Thank you, Forrest. Wait a second. Oh, 
forest. What did we do? I don't know, actually. I guess we'll find out. Forrest, there's another call coming in. Evening, caller. You're live on... Oh, oh. Forrest! Oh. The psycho's somewhere in the roller rink, dude. I just saw a shadow. And... God damn, how do you even get in? Wait a second. You've got to help me, man. Forrest. Maxine, no. Out. Come back. No. Anybody, but I can't let anything happen to <gasps> Maxine. No. No, Maxine. <laughs> Maxine. You didn't do anything wrong. Okay. No! Okay. Here's some music while we process what just happened. Jesus Christ! So, the whistling man is a woman? I know. I, I can't believe it. <laughs> I she didn't know! Up. You spoke to her multiple times. Yes. I thought she was just... Regular Gallows Creek Strange. Yeah. Really, Forrest? Yes! Yes! Why do you think she requested that song? To get me outside. To get me outside? Maybe, but how? She didn't know the song was outside to start with. That's right. She never actually attacked me out there. So? What now? I guess I should make an announcement. We do have new info. Okay, kill the music and you can make the announcement. Okay, you're live in three, two... Hey folks, this is Forrest Nash here. I hope you're all safely locked inside. For those of you listening to that last call, you might be wondering what to make of it all. Here's our take. We now believe the killer is actually a woman. One who might manipulate you into letting her in before she attacks you. I'm sad to say, but it's time to trust no one. Yeah. The killer was calling themselves Dawn. This could be a fake name. Yeah. If anyone needs help or you have info on the killer, please call in. You folks have my new number, right? It's 911. Hopefully, our next caller can help shed some light on our killer. Hey, we had a call come in. Okay, folks, time to take a call. This is Forrest Nash, and you're listening. Please help me. My name is Casey Moore. I'm Casey at 25 Moore. Nancy Drive. My best friend's been stabbed. He's. He's bleeding everywhere. I don't know what to do. Please help me. Well, that's unfortunate. I'm like the worst detective. I'm sorry. I'm really sad. I'm really sad that the dog died. I'm that really has me feeling some type of way. First bullet. Now Maxi. What am I going to do? I can't lose another dog, guys. I just can't. This is breaking me. That is all the time I have for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a like, leave a comment down below, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and if you are subscribed, please be sure to hit the bell notification, that way you are aware of the next time that I post. I love you. Don't forget your boobs. Boop. Okay, bye. I'm gonna go hug my dog now. Oh god. Oh god. I'm not ready for this. I'm not ready for this. I'm not ready for this. How do I feel it? 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 Get back! 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 Get back!